Um, so we've adjusted our ventilator settings as we want. We, oh, Jacqueline. Yes. Could we please start some post intubation sedation and yes, anesthesia, please? Yes, absolutely. What would you uh, like? How about some fentanyl and propofol? Perfect. Please? Get the drips going. Let's remove our oxygen from the wall and connect the vent to our oxygen supply, our portable oxygen supply, please, Lacey. Yes. And we're going to now insert uh, our OG uh, tube at this point in time as well. So I have a question. I will need an IV pump that is outside of the room. Okay. So we'll need to get the cleaning team to uh, hand it through. Excellent. Each hospital will be different. Where we work, our plan A is to get the patient over to the ICU as quickly as possible. If a bed is not available, however, we will likely find this out prior to entering the room. In that situation, we can simply bring more equipment into the room before the team enters. However, we can still transfer equipment safely into the room after the fact, as long as we keep one of our anti-room doors closed at all times to ensure we maintain negative pressure. Negative pressure room to anti-room, uh, or outside team, uh, actually. Could we have a triple channel pump in the room, please? Get that triple channel pump now, So, as you saw, this is the clean team. We are grabbing the triple channel pump. The outdoor was closed to maintain negative pressure and they were able to pass this uh, IV uh, pump through to me. So in most anti-rooms, as long as you keep one door closed at all times, you will maintain your negative pressure and your clean team remains clean. And we're going to start our pre-departure preparation. Inside team to anti-room. Uh, about to begin our pre-departure preparation checklist. Over. Angus, this is Mike in the anti -road. We are preparing to receive patient as per pre-departure checklist. Over. Confirm that. If I could ask our runner inside the room for uh, a table for our portable monitor, please. Over. Got it. Over. So our, our runner is coming with our table for our portable monitor. Actually, we'll get Jacqueline to take the table from the clean team. Yep, pass it through, thank you. Perfect. I'll help you. Thank you, just because it's, thank you. How you doing up there, Lacey? Are you okay? Perfect. So we're going to place our portable monitor on our table. We're going to transition the patient to the portable monitor from our in-room monitor. And we're going to move the IV fluid to the head or the triple channel, which we are on. Yep. Outside team, could we confirm that the ICU is ready to receive the patient? Over. Excellent, Natina. Thank you. Could I confirm that you start donning your PPE? And we'll get one of our porters to come lead our transfer, transport team over to the ICU. Over. Anti room team, we're about to go through our pre departure checklist. Over. So our airway is secure, Lacey? Yes. Our viral filter is secure? Yes. Our end title is at target? Yes. Our SPO2 is at target? Yes. And we have adequate oxygen supply? Correct. Check. Our hemodynamics are good, Jacqueline? Yes, I got the table. And sedation is adequate? Yes. And we have good monitor power and ventilator power at the moment? Correct. Excellent. Anti-room team, outside team, we're about to prepare departure to ICU. Over. This is Mike in the anti-room We are ready for the patient for departure. Over. Can you confirm that everybody's done in their PPE and ready to receive the patient? Over. Uh, the PPE is done and in place. Everybody is ready for reception of patient. Over. Excellent, thank you. Could we have the land clear the anti-room of any clean equipment that we didn't use, like our uh, blue box, please? We will uh, start that back and confirm all. Thank you, over. We're going to connect the ventilator to portable oxygen. We have done that. Yeah. So before leaving the room,
confirm, thank you. Prior to moving the patient, we're gonna wipe the stretcher clean. We have some wipes here. Thank you. So we're gonna wipe as best we can and try and decontaminate, decontaminate the stretcher. will make their way to the intensive care unit. Our patient has now left the room and Lacey begins the doffing process. Given the type of gowns we have used, she starts with her gloves. Keep in mind we would recommend double gloving for an aerosol generating medical procedure. After washing her hands, she moves to her face shield. We are reusing face shields for simulation purposes, hence her not throwing it in the garbage. We recommend washing your hands between every step of the doffing process. Lacey will now begin doffing her gown. Both her team and our formal spotter can observe Lacey doffing in the proper fashion. This doffing process would change if we used level 2 disposable gowns. The next step is very important as the doorknob is contaminated. 
Prior to leaving the negative pressure room, Lacey will place one hand on the doorknob and one hand on the alcohol wash. Lacey will then leave the room while washing your hands and head to the ante room. There, she will continue the doffing process, where we would recommend washing hands in between doffing her surgical cap and her mask. She then moves to the sink to continue good hand hygiene. And because the patient has gone through the ante room, it is considered contaminated. Um, so when she leaves the ante room as well to leave, she must wash her hands on the inside as well. And remember that documentation tool we talked about earlier in this video? Check boxes and reminders allow our nurses to simplify their documentation. But since we can't take it out of the room, how do we get this information onto the patient's medical chart? So prior to me doffing and leaving the room, I have my checklist that I've written on my documentation on, what I need to do, um, because this cannot leave the room. What I will do is tape it up over here, so when I am out of the room and clean, I can see all of the things that uh, we have done and documented accordingly. Simply point the camera on your phone at the link shown in front of you. This will take you to all the documents that were used during this video. We are big believers in the Zero Point Survey here at EM Centered. We find it's an excellent way to organize ourselves prior to any resuscitative measure. Everything you have seen in this video has used the Zero Point Survey to step up the way we resuscitate our COVID patient. This is where we prepare ourselves, our team, and our environment prior to patient resuscitation. After we begin our resuscitative process, we continue to provide regular updates and priorities in our resuscitation. This allows for a shared mental model within the team and sets the resuscitative priorities and trajectory moving forward. For more information on the Zero Point Survey and how it relates to resuscitating our COVID patients, simply point your camera from your phone at the link above to take you to our blog post. Thank you very much everyone. Take care and please stay healthy.